There are a few tech products I bought this year, and when I really think about it, I probably shouldn't have even bought them in the first place. And in this video, I wanted to share the five tech products I regret buying. And look, I know these may be hot takes, but they're based off of my own personal use and experience. Starting off with the Amazon Halo. Now we all know that Amazon and Jeff Bezos are trying to take over the world. They own Whole Foods, they have their own clothing brands. They bought freaking MGM. I am inevitable. But health? That's the one area that I think they need a bit more work on. Amazon launched their first iteration of their fitness tracker, the Amazon Halo, in August of 2020, and they were trying to target that group of people like you and me who are really looking into fitness trackers like Fitbit and Garmin during the middle of the pandemic. It was cheaper than the other popular brands, it had a minimal design and form factor, and it also tracked everything that the other competitors did in regards to your health stats, but even more with their movement health, where it gave you a movement quality score, an exercise plan to help you focus on improving your level of mobility. They also had this crazy body composition feature where you could analyze your body fat by taking a 3D model of yourself using your cell phone's camera. And it had this feature called tone analysis, which would make you aware of how you sound when you talk to other people. It's just as weird as it sounds. And yeah, all of those features sound great in theory, but in execution, the original Amazon Halo was definitely not worth it in my opinion. The app, which is the only way to access your data because there's no screen on the actual Amazon Halo itself, it wasn't reliable as many of the other apps that are out there in terms of syncing throughout the day and providing consistent health stats. And the workout program content they provided just wasn't doing it for me in terms of difficulty, quality, or interest. Honestly, guys, I stopped using my Amazon Halo months ago. It's like Amazon had all the best intentions, but there still clearly needs to be more refinement on the software and hardware front. Now I also know they launched an updated tracker in late 2021 called the Halo View, which added the screen and updated capabilities such as SPO2 and heart rate monitoring. They've also had two years to update the app and fine tune the hardware. So you know what, they might've fixed many of these issues recently, but the first impression definitely left a bad taste in my mouth and I'm a bit hesitant to reconsider. But if you're interested in me revisiting the Amazon fitness ecosystem and testing out its latest Amazon Halo View, let me know in the comments below. Now the next product I regretted buying, which I don't have here because I returned it, was the Peloton Guide. Now, I love my Peloton bike, like I really do. I even made a video reviewing why I thought it was worth the money that I paid for it, which is one of the reasons why I was so excited to try out the Peloton Guide in the first place when it was announced in early April of 2022. It was Peloton's first hardware attempt at focusing on the strength side of training, and I bought the entire package, including the two 25-pound Peloton dumbbells and their branded workout mat. And at first, I loved it. It was a really cool concept. It had an Apple TV-like experience where you can navigate through various strength training classes on your TV screen. The Peloton Guide camera would allow you to see yourself alongside the instructor to make sure that your form was correct. And it could also track your various reps as you go through the workout class. The TV app would also show you the different body parts that you've trained the most, so you could focus on the areas that weren't maybe getting the same type of love in future workouts. But for me, the problem was that the value just wasn't enough for me to stick to the strength sessions hosted on the platform on a consistent basis. I didn't feel that my body was getting as much work in as I did when I went to my local neighborhood gym where I had a full set of equipment. It also seemed that I was building way more muscle endurance than actual strength and size, which of course is a more personal preference for me, but I also couldn't find a seamless way to do the bike boot camp workouts. You would think that you'd be able to get off the bike and then easily transition to the strength part of the workout with the Peloton Guide, but that functionality was not possible, so I had to stick to just one or the other, which was pretty disappointing. I ultimately just found myself more drawn to do the Peloton bike workouts for cardio, and then I just supplement my other days with weightlifting at my actual gym. So so do I think it's a terrible product? No, not at all. It just isn't the right product for me. If you're just starting out on your fitness journey or maybe trying to get back into working out, then I actually do think it is worth considering as I think strength training sometimes gets the short end of the stick when it comes to people trying to lose weight and get fit, when I actually believe it's the main ingredient to building a healthier body. The third product I regret buying is the TheraBody Wave Duo. Now, it actually is a useful product, but I think mainly for a niche purpose. The form factor is very different from your average foam roller with a peanut-shaped design. You're able to foam roll those tight muscles located on your back without putting too much pressure or vibration on actual bone. It also does this without too much noise. I personally love using it on my calves, low back, and traps, and the five different speeds were definitely useful in determining a manageable massage level. However, I really do wish that I just bought a full-size electric foam roller in the first place, as this just isn't the same as using something like a TheraBody Wave Roller or the Hyperize Viper 3, where I can cover so much more surface area like my quads and my hamstrings. I just found the Dual just a bit too small of a device sometimes for what I needed it for, and I feel like it just takes a lot longer for me to fully warm up or cool down my intended muscle groups using this device. The fourth product I regret buying was the Beat Studio Buds. Now, for these, it wasn't because they were bad headphones. I actually really enjoyed using them when I first purchased them. I just bought them right before the Beats Fit Pro came out. 
They have okay noise cancellation, a decent battery life of eight hours of listening time, and it supports Apple's patented spatial audio. But it doesn't match the quality and functionality of the Beats Fit Pro, which have the wingtips that allow for the earbuds to stay in your ears more securely. They also have the H1 chip, which allows for Hey Siri activation and audio sharing. However, I do recommend the Beats Studio Buds for people who are looking for those cheaper earbuds that still have decent quality. And then I recommend the Beats Fit Pros for those more serious workout enthusiasts and if you do hardcore workouts. The last and final piece of tech I regretted buying was actually the subscription to the Headspace app. It's kind of embarrassing because the reason why I regret paying for that year membership was the fact that I just never used it. I could probably count on my fingers the number of times I actually did one of their meditations. I just wasn't hooked to it like I was the Calm app. It seemed that in order to get the most out of their programs, I'd have to meditate between four to six times a day, which even though that's not a bad habit to get into, I just don't personally think I have the time in my current schedule to fit that in. I specifically love the Calm app because I just do my daily routine where I'd wake up, meditate for five to 10 minutes in the morning, then do a daily movement stretching, fill out my gratitude reflection journal, and then be on the go for the rest of my day. Day. And I also think that I got so used to the voices on the Calm app that the ones in Headspace, this just didn't do it for me. I know I should probably give Headspace a fair chance, but I think I might just go back to the Calm app. Now, don't worry, I will definitely make another video soon on my actual favorite tech products that I purchased this past year that I do think are worth looking into. But in the meantime, check this video out, which may be helpful if you're interested in other tech products that can help improve your health and fitness. Stay healthy, be happy, and embrace the hype. Woo! Oh, oh, oh.